All right, well, let's rock and roll. Salud, man. We are. Man, we are. Good to see Marcos in the house here, yes, man. Yes, sir. Marcos in the hizzle. For shizzle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD, and we would like to thank our main sponsor for the evening. That's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment, located out of Van Nuys, California. You want to know everything Knox Pro? All you got to do is log on to their website at www.knoxpro.com. Big Kish, how are you? Yay, yay. Yeah. Let's drop bombs on them. So Man. You, you didn't travel this weekend. You were home. You got to chill out. How, how was everything? It was amazing. Fantastic. I got some time to unwind. I was able to go see my boy Samson. Mm -hmm. Big Samson, uh, you know, play out there in uh, at, uh, his game, you know, with Notre Dame High School football team. And uh, they played survive. And uh, it was a good game, uh, but unfortunately, we took the L. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it, it was way out there. It was an orange... Uh, Coast uh, College out there. Okay. So it was like a two-hour drive. You know, driving here in L.A. Mm -hmm. on a Friday, oh. it is absolutely miserable. Oh. And so I didn't leave out here until I think I left at 12.30, and I still pulled up at 6 p.m. <laughs> Yikes. And that's in L.A.? You didn't even leave L.A.? Well, I, uh, Six I don't want to say whose fault it is, <laughs> but I had the family with me, and we drove to the wrong damn school. <laughs> And then went to the wrong damn Coliseum <laughs> and then had to back down and drive finally. At this point, if I was by myself, I would have just drove back home, man. Oh, my goodness. I would have just watched the game on the app. I was so hot. And just, But we finally, finally got there and I uh, pulled up at 6 o'clock and that was it. I found me a corner to chill at. Uh-huh. And then I just chilled and just watched the game, man. Just happy to be there. Did you guys get a good parking spot? Absolutely. Didn't yeah. need a scooter to get on? Uh, oh, absolutely not. The <laughs> blind man. The blind man pulled up, you know. <laughs> Mama just pulled up the car where it needed to be, and that was it. Uh, you know what I mean? For those of you that remember uh, the last time Big Keish was at a, uh, one of Samson's football events, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he had to get on one of the scooters and uh, yeah, didn't, yeah. didn't do so well. Took a damn bump, man. man my, my, my damn elbow's still trying to heal up from right now. A 450-pound guy has no, no business <laughs> being on a damn scooter. So anybody out there that's making scooters, I dare you to make a scooter that'll hold up a 450-pound bleach blonde hair Samoan. You know what I mean? There's your plug right there. I, I imagine I, it's going to happen soon now. Well, let's just do it, you know? Hey, and it's good to see our friend Marcos is in the house. Yes, sir. Garcia. Yes, sir. Now, what's the name of your business? What are you doing now, man? 5590 Productions. 5590 Productions. I got to tell you what, Marcos is probably one of the hardest working men in show business. Uh, man, uh, he's got all the nice toys, all the knowledge. He knows a lot of stuff. Good guy. It's good to see you, Marcos. It's been a minute. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> he's a lifesaver. Yes, yes. I just see him. I called him. You know, we're going to put it out. We, we've been delayed a couple weeks. Just a, you know, just a little technical problem. But you know what? When you got a bunch of wrestlers trying to do a podcast and a manager and a producer that we do music. We don't do, like, you know, all this videos going back and forth. So, you know, I've been trying to, like, for the last, I don't know, what, six months? Mm -hmm. <laughs> six months? <laughs> About six months, you know. We've been just trying to get, you know, get all this stuff situated. We're not right. doing too bad. Not too bad. You know, enough. after we've seen, you know, we put out those teasers last week. I mean, that's us again. Now, I, I got to admit, I was very entertained by those uh, teasers. Well, exactly. Yeah, well, you was out there talking about Nicki Minaj and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I mean. But anytime. it was your genuine reaction when I showed you. Like, you lost it. And it you know, I just, Yeah, because I, that was funny. It was funny. It you know is what I mean? funny. It I mean, is some funny. people have been getting mad at me at this podcast. Because if you don't know Keisha yet, I speak my mind. Yes, sir. I don't give a damn how you feel or what. If you don't like it, turn the damn podcast off. Hit the switch. Grab the remote. I don't know. Shove it up your <laughs> Do something with it. You know what I mean? If you don't like it, turn it. Yes, sir. You know? But so this is the this is the difference here with when you when you get Big Keisha on the line, mm -hmm. this is what you're going to get. But going back to Marcos here, you know what I mean? This guy here does all the concerts and stuff, all, all these. You see big screens. I mean, you talk about speakers, a sound system, forget it. He used to do this for us back in, well, for Knox Pro back in the day, mm -hmm. from day one, you know. And uh, for a while, I thought he moved to Texas and forgot to say goodbye to me <laughs> and broke my damn heart. And I, I opened up the phone on my iPhone, and his number's still in. I said, this is God done sent me Marco's number mm -hmm. in my phone. And I called him up. I said, brother, I need you. I need you. Come on through. So 
I feel good. You know what I mean? I'm sure our whole crew feel good now because we got some type of direction now which way we going as far as technical. Yes, sir. Technical problems. Yes, sir. And you know what? Not only feeling good, you're looking good in that brand new Rikishi off the top swag you're wearing there on the top. The hat right there. Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, grab your exclusive off the top merch now. Show your support and represent the podcast with our latest designs. We're going to bless Marcos with a hat. <laughs> Head over to rikishifatu.com and get yours today. Don't miss out. There's all kinds of new merchandise. That looks good on you, Marcos. Check yeah, it, it out. <laughs> Check it out. So it's everybody out there. That, it's not that cheap cheap stuff. No, not at all. I mean, you know, we don't we don't sell cheap merchandise. No, I even got that Letterman jacket that you gave me personally. Oh, and I, I got to tell you. Um, I, I I broke a few hearts just putting it on out there. Yeah. I, women fell in love with me right away, but I was like, no, I'm getting married. I'm the latest pet that man's regret. Yeah. I get it, but no. It must have been the guys with the yellow hair back. It was the, the jacket. Blonde. No, it was totally the, the jacket. blonde hair with the yellow glasses on back there. And the thong. Yes, sir. And, and yes, sir. the thong. The thong, <laughs> thong. That's, that's going to be the next Letterman jacket. What's that? We all make us a Letterman jacket with a thong in the back. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Baby got back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my, my So goodness. what is happening in the so, world oh. of professional wrestling? Because I know you've been up and down. Yes, sir. Scrolling all around. Yes, sir. And just yes, checking sir. in. Look, I sound like TMD with all the rhymes. <laughs> well, you know I'll what? Never come. See, I never comes. You're starting once... to wipe up on me. So, well, you know, it, it, you know yeah. it'll happen. It's a good thing. It'll come to you. It'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> it came to me. Come to God. <laughs> That's all we do. We just sit here and just bullshit and just keep it going, man. But And you know what, right. Big Keish? I've been hearing yeah. from a lot of the fans, too. And I want to give a quick shout-out to two fans in particular. All right. Silverback and uh, Kari uh, out there, big fans of the show. They send their love. They want to send their big shout-outs to Big Keish. What's I the name? Uh, Kari and Silverback. Now, who the hell calls somebody a Silverback? Uh, who, who, who is Silver? Where is Silverback first, from? His first name is Steve, and you know what? Oh, not to, not to. Uh, I, yeah, okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you uh, where he's that from. That must right? be your, your football nickname or no, something. Not Silverback? Mine. Not his. No, yeah. Steve, right? Yeah, yeah. call yeah. himself, you know, Silverback. I think it might be because of the age and the gray hair or something. You know, people call. You well, know, how normally, they have milfs and cougars. They yeah. got Silverbacks. If okay. you're a guy, I guess. Well, big I shout out to Steve. I'd rather call you Steve. Yes, sir. Big, All big right. fans of the show, and they All just right. wanted to send their love. And I thank you, man. Yes, sir. Sending that shout out for you guys out there. So, of course, bringing you up to speed, Big Keish. SmackDown, your son, Solis Okoa, in the steel cage match with uh, Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Um, so, of course, I had to ask you right away. You know a lot about steel cages. Um, let's talk about yeah, that for I, a I've jumped off a few. A and few. Fell off the back a few. A few. So, yeah. let's talk about that for, for a quick a, second. It's not a fun thing to do. Let's talk about uh, when was the first time you were ever in a steel cage match? <laughs> it was in the backyard. <laughs> really? <laughs> Those make believe steel cages. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped on there trying to jump off on Anki, and then to jump off the top and the damn cage breaks. <laughs> where, where was this at? It was in Florida, man. We all those make believe cages. Yeah, you know, that's good. Get you, that's what happened when you're watching stuff, watching your uncles on wrestling, and then you get up and you try to, you know, you know, back in the backyard, you just try to get whatever works. Whatever looks like that. So uh, we, we put some fake cage together and got up there. And my ass took a bump. Damn near, <laughs> damn near broke my damn neck before my career started. <laughs> oh, jeez. So that was the very uh, first uh, uh, somewhat cage match. What about yeah. once you got to the uh, the? Oh, when I got paid? Yes, sir. Oh yeah. Well, hell, that's uh, man. I'd have to say out there in Texas against uh, do it to it, Steve Cox. And the Freebird Michael Hayes. Wow. Out there in the Von Erics. Yeah, Michael knows about this in Dallas, Texas. The Sportatorium. Yes, sir. You're probably too uh, oh, young. Of course. I've, no, I've been there. You remember. Oh, you? I, I, okay. I, well, I, not while of course I was up, been of course. There. I did. Of I did. Course when I went there. to Dallas, I said, take me to the Sportatorium. Yeah. I did. I went there. I'm not so, going to lie. Yeah, I was there. We had a cage match there. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, working against Do It To It, Steve Cox, and uh, Michael Hayes. You know? And then uh, I think the finish was... Uh, we eliminated uh, uh, Steve Cox, and then there's two wild Samoans. We're supposed to be built up like, like just animals. We just killers, mm-hmm. and we couldn't beat old Freebird Michael Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we know about the business, <laughs> you know. When you come to Texas, boy, you gotta lay down. Oh you know what I mean? man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> We smartened up real quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, thank, wow. Thank well, you, Michael Ice. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate putting us over. <laughs> what do you do to now that you're in the real, getting paid to do the real steel cage matches with the real steel? What do you do mentally to prepare for something like that? Because it's not a regular match. I mean, and that's not fake steel, ladies and gentlemen. Like, yeah. not prop steel. That is real steel cages. Anytime you see that out there. So, what do you do mentally to prepare for a match uh, as a Man, as hardcore as that. I mean, that's that's pretty crazy to go in there in a steel cage. And how do you prepare for that? You, you don't. You just in the zone, man. You. It's like another day at the. You know, another walk in the park. You know what I mean? When you when you get ready to be put in a situation like that, you're already trained for it, man. Goes back to your training, your mindset. You put yourself in the zone. Do what you got to do. Pair off to a corner or something, and just get your little me time. You know, say a little prayer, you know, and then you just get out there and you just do what you do. Now, when you get in the cage, you just kind of look around and first thing I do is I touch the cage and I, I walk around and kind of feel certain parts of the cage. Make sure this is tight enough. Is this loose or this blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll kind of, you know, feel out a corner, make sure that corner is not loose and I don't get my ass up there and bust my ass down. Right. So it's it's a lot of researching and checking Stuff, but as far as a match, man, you just, you know, if it's New York City, Madison Square Garden, they're already lit. You know, them people out there, boy, they just love violence. <laughs> they love professional wrestling. They love blood. I mean, they love cage. I mean, this, this is where that iconic splash of uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Snooker on Snooker. to Don Morocco. Don Rondo, brother, just stay there. Don't move, damn it. Don't move, Don Morocco. Here I come, pretty. <laughs> One, two, oh, damn it, you move. <laughs> and so, and so, so New York City, they got a different vibe. But if you go to Chicago or, you know, it's not as lit as New York City. So you, you kind of play around with, you, you know, what, what, what works in the match. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You work, what are you working for, Joey? The match. You're always working for the match. That's what Kishi does. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking of matches, yeah. what would you, uh, thinking back, what was your favorite steel cage match that you were personally in to this day? Oh, what was it? Hell in the Cell, Hell in the Cell, yeah, which we're going to talk about. That's yeah. going to be its own episode uh, one of these days. Yeah. It's going to be its own episode, but that was that was your favorite steel that cage match? That was still my favorite. I mean, unless I'm, I make a comeback or somehow or whatever. I mean, it had to be something like, I don't know, to top that, I'd have to be up against Randy Orton, maybe. Wow. You know what I mean? I, I, it's just, I keep talking about Randy, man, but Randy's a goat. Yes, he is. I think Randy can bring the best out of Kishi out there, you know what I mean? And make me forget my age and stuff and just get out there to be able to be in the zone working against an icon as Randy and just let me do what I do and do what I love, man. And that's just to get out there and just back that thing up, bust the move and Shake what your mama gave you. So you guys, you and the Viper never tussled? No, you guys never man. got in there together? No, he, he was very close to, to my brother, Eki. Okay. You know, mama back in the day, man. Uh, yeah, they were very, very close. And, uh, you know, I've always, uh, you know, loved Randy's pops and Randy, you know, that family there, the Orton's, you know what I mean? Yes, Just one of the best families, uh, you know, one of the best workers for that matter. You know what I mean? Bob, you can touch that heel, boy. You know, when he throw them damn elbows on you and drop those elbows on you, nobody throws a, uh, throws an elbow like, oh, you know, Bob Orton, you know? Nobody wears a cast and, like and, Bob Orton either. Yeah, <laughs> and now here comes uh, Randy. You know, his son just picks up everything what his pops, you know, has, uh, uh, you know, taught and so forth and carry on the family legacy. So, yeah. Yeah. Randy I, Orton seems to me like a real legit tough dude. I'm sure he is. I mean, <laughs> who his pops is. Right. You never hear stories about, you know, Bob Orton backing down the nope from nobody. But then again, Bob Orton is not a guy that goes out and look for trouble. He's always happy. When I see him at all the Comic-Cons, man, he, you know, his lines still do good. People still come out there and pay respect to, you know, Bob Orton, the cowboy, you know. And then he's always happy, dude. He's always, you know, just in a smiling mood all the time. I've never seen that man, you know, like grumpy or upset mm -hmm. to be at work or having an experience with, bad with fans, you know? So he's an example of being a professional pro wrestler, you know, in and out to square circle. Yes, sir. So uh, in this steel cage match, uh, your son unfortunately was unsuccessful and uh, 
gaining <laughs> the WWE Undisputed Championship from Cody Rhodes. But everyone's talking about the OTC, uh, the original Tribal Chief coming in and, uh, man, just spearing everybody, spears galore. Uh, and then, of course, Jacob got in there. There was that standoff. Yeah. And, w- wow, it's just crazy to me because just one minute, you know, a, a few seconds ago, we're in a locker room together. Next thing you know, he is face-to-face with one of the greatest in the business, and they're right in a steel cage yeah. of all places. And, of course, Solo wouldn't let him go, and then there's Cody and Roman. They got that stare down. Do you think they're going to end up teaming up somewhere down the line? What do you think of that team? I mean, because like people like Randy Orton and Kevin Owens have been fighting the bloodline for the last two, three years with Cody Rhodes, and now Cody Rhodes is teaming up with with Roman Reigns. So what do you mm. What do you think? Do you, would that frustrate you as uh, somebody fighting for Cody Rhodes? Uh, well, if I was in, uh, if I was in Randy and uh, Kevin Owens, now maybe for Randy. No, I don't think Randy would be frustrating to Randy. Uh, I think Randy knows his role. You know, I think uh, Randy is the most professional and understands. If it's with Kevin Owens, uh, I I know Kevin Owens, but not as well. So I I can't really, you know, speak on, you know, what that feeling is, must be. For me, I'd probably be upset. Because here I am, been working with the bloodline, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, here comes, you know what I mean, the OTC back, and, and here, you know, put together with the the man of the company, Cody Rhodes, and now we're kind of like, we're out the picture, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that hurts my pocketbook, you know? I think that, you know, that hurts, you know, the, the I guess that tells me where I stand in, in, in this angle, I guess, so I don't know, you know, uh... <laughs> It's, it seems like, you know, every time I put out my thoughts or my opinions, <laughs> yeah. you know, they rip it off and then it's like, yo, you know, Rikishi is this. And I, you, I'm just speaking my humble opinion. Yes, sir. You know, without giving away, I don't know any finishes. I don't know what's going to happen. Like I said, I'm not in the WWE, so I don't know what I'm saying is from experience. Like, if it was me. This what I would be doing. Plus, you kind of earned the right to speak your mind on, uh, you know, wrestling. Uh, yeah, just a I bit, think, you know, you know WWE <laughs> Hall of Famer. I mean, you, would you think, know, you would think. 35 plus. Yeah, I think so. You know, I'm a rookie. Let- <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 shoot over to Monday Night Raw. Of course, and speaking of angles, because yeah. this was a badass angle. Yeah. Your son, uh, Jay Uso and Braun Breaker. Now, what okay. I love about this is two second uh, generation mm-hmm. um, athletes going at it. And now they're talking about families because Braun Breaker wasn't talking about his family for a while. He kind of um, yeah. wanted to make it on his own. He didn't want to write off the, the Steiner name, so he came in there. But now he's finally acknowledging his family. Yeah. And they had an interesting segment. Both, uh, you know, he said that uh, Jay Uso basically needs his family to make it, and he never needed his family. I thought uh-huh. this was very interesting stuff. Yeah. Let me ask you something really quick about second generation wrestlers. What advantage does second-generation wrestlers have over just anybody walking into the wrestling business? Well, being around it. You know, being around it. That doesn't necessarily mean just because you're around it that you're going to be good at it. You know, obviously, you know, that promo there, I I thought they both knocked it out the park. Yes, absolutely. It was very intense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, like, Mm -hmm. really emotional. Like, if you lived out there in, I don't know, Hawaii someplace or Australia... South Africa, you can feel the emotions on both of these cats' facials, you know, the tone of their voice and how they just, you know, took their time on getting their point across. So, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, both of them uh, have been, you know, doing their homework. Yep. You can tell they're both passionate about it. You can tell that they have responsibility uh, because you cannot get away from where your bloodline comes. You know, be it a big bloodline or a small bloodline, it's still the bloodline, and they're going to have to mention, you know, the company or the, the person that's writing the script, whatever. You, you know, it only makes sense that people's going to know, like, you know, uh, where you come from. So I'm sure that, you know, I was, I, I, I'm sure Rick Steiner was happy. Scott was happy mm-hmm. because, you know, we used to mix it up together, man. And we had, I've had some of the best matches, me and my my partner, my cousin Samu, you know, the head shrinker versus the Steiner brothers. And we just loved that full contact. 
you know, where if, if they were to work with other people, they would probably complain that they were too stiff or we were too stiff. But that's just the way we like it. And so to have Jay and uh, and Brian go at it, man, mm. it's gonna be it's gonna be a money maker, man. Let's let's hope they don't kill it the first first round, you know, go around. Um, so I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned all that because I want to spend the rest of this episode talking about the Fatu Steiner rivalry because it yeah. goes back. Um, okay. When did that? When did it first start? Was that the late eighties, the early nineties? Oh, uh, we didn't get into them till, man, coming into uh, NWA before WCW, I think it was uh, late eighties, right? Because we were only there for like uh, a couple years, and when we came through, we actually came through and we were uh, the tag team of uh, Paul Heyman back in the day, right? And then we danced with the Road Warriors, danced with. Uh, uh, with the Steiner brothers. So the majority of the time was both of those cats. But a lot of the times, you know, we worked a lot with Steiners once we all went up to uh, to WWF back in the day, WWE now. When did you when did you first meet the Steiners? Like, do you remember the first oh, time man. you met them? And, and what was your first impression of them? 1987, man. 1988, uh, the late when we first... When we first found out we, we were, we were going to work with them. We met them in the locker room. You know what I mean? You remember how Scotty used to look? Scotty looked like, damn, <laughs> like Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> and then you look, you know, the dog, you know, the dog face. Dog Rick face Stein, gremlin. One of my best friends in the business, man. He was just, you touch those guys' body, just bumping into them, it about, you know, dislocate your shoulder. <laughs> and they were just so jacked, jacked up and, just, you know, their body was hard, just muscle, you know. Uh, but then when you get in there working, man, we just... We we just mesh together so well. You know, when you work against certain people, yes, sir. you feel like, damn it, you're struggling with this person, you know? But not these guys. We just, you know, and that started off a real liking relationship amongst the Samoans and the Steiners uh, because we just knew that every night we knew what to expect from each other and we knew we was going to go out there and tear the house down. And uh, so I want to say, you know, the first, you know, first time we ever signed with NWA, uh, with '89, I think Joey, I, it's late, late, late '80s when we got there. As competitive as you all were, the brothers, you and your family, was there ever tensions between you guys, or has it always been love from the from the jump? With the Steiner brothers, yes, sir. Always been love, yes, sir. But we 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 always like you know in the ring, we would uh, we would compete to make each other better. You know what I mean? If we just felt like the match were like we're not getting the people, we would just compete. Just man, come on, you know what I mean? And then before you know it, once we got them there, it was time for us to go home. Because once you get the fans where you need them to be, it's it's no it's no reason to be out there anymore to try to fix that. It's time to go home strong on the finish. So, so yeah, it, it was always us trying to make each other better. And it's safe to say, out of the two brothers, you're closest with Rick. I'm actually close. Out of the two brothers, yeah, I talk to Rick a lot more. Uh, Scotty's kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I love Scotty. I love both. But uh, Scotty's kind of uh, uh, so, uh, just a low-profile type of dude. Don't talk too much. So he's a good guy. You know, I always talk to him when I see him at the Comic-Cons. But, you know, the Rick is just, I always text him out the blues and stuff, you know, yes, just for random stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so I, they're both badasses. Everybody knows that, like road warrior yeah. status, badasses. I know it'd be hard to uh, probably answer this, but which Steiner brother do you think would have been the tougher one, like in a street fight? Do you think it would have been Rick Steiner or Scott Steiner? Man, I think I'd have to go with Scott because Rick, Rick can kind of calm down. You know what I mean? He can kind of calm down and reason. But I think once once Scott blows a fuse, uh, that forget it. The only person going to reason with Scott is Scott. So, and plus, not to mention, he's just one strong son of a. B and you've worked him yeah. in singles matches, and, and of course, yeah. everybody knows about the match at WrestleMania Nine, which also one of our best matches. We're gonna have a, a whole episode just on WrestleMania Nine as well. That was good. Um, I know you've worked uh, Scott Steiner in single matches, but did you ever work uh, Rick Steiner, uh, Rick Steiner in singles matches? Oh yeah, many okay. times. Okay, you know, mm -hmm. back in the day, they would book stuff like that. You know, of course, the finish would never be the finish, right? 
because they would have the brother or Samu run in. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it'd be a count out, whatever the case it may be, advertised to come back as a tag in the cage, whatever uh, gimmick type of match they have. But, you know, just in general, Samoans working the Steiner brothers was always money. And here we are in 2024. Man. And we're back at it again. Uh, and it's just as hot and it's just as fresh, but it, yeah. and now it's it's your kids going at it. Um, how, does, how does that make you feel? I'm a proud pop. I'm a proud family member, you know, watching everything on the sidelines and just, uh, you know, enjoying the ride. You know what I mean? I'm not there, but I'm riding with them. You know, know that I'm on the side and always rooting. I'm the number one fan and, and I always going to speak my mind. You know what I mean? And let's just hope that, you know, uh, you know, all the boys, everybody in the family and even the boys in the locker room, everybody stays healthy. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, man, the TV shuts off. Everybody's riding and stuff, you know, tired, aching from night before, injuries and surgeries. and But the show goes on, man. Yes, sir. The show goes on. So I can only just, you know, wish, uh, you know, uh, uh, strength and, and healthy to, uh, health to everybody out there that's doing it. Not just only the bloodline, you know, because it takes other wrestlers to dance with the bloodline vice versa you know what i mean so yes, and big shout out to all those that are still trying uh to get the spotlight like don't never give up man you know what i mean be happy that you're signed you get a contract you're getting a weekly paycheck you might not be getting the spotlight now but in due time you already know what you train for you already know what you signed for you already know what your role is for now right so keep on working hard keep yourself clean keep yourself you know uh, out of trouble you know what I mean? Don't 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 do anything that's gonna jeopardize your opportunity and your family. You know, so understand that. You know what I mean? Get out there and perform and just be thankful and grateful that your dream has come true to be able to be a WWE superstar. Yes, sir. Before we wrap it up, I had two questions uh, for you. What were your thoughts on the big bad booty daddy, big bumper pump uh gimmick? I just, I thought it was over. Man, I I was like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, it, I, I think we still kind of got the same vibe. As, you know, I, I represent all the biggins. <laughs> you know what I mean? All them big, big, bad booty apple bottoms out there. We're we not bodybuilders, but we still, you know, I'm like that, you know, like that, you know, the natural. Natural. I'm saying that Scotty wasn't, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But, uh-huh. I mean, when you look at Scotty, tell me what, 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 what fitness chick would not want to lay up with a, with big bad booty man? Right, right. You know what I mean? Look, look. His body built like you know, just like like a women's a women's pet. Like he said, it was all about his peaks and his freaks. The peaks which, and freaks, which, which I loved. And goodbye. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yes, sir. Peaks yes, sir. and freaks and goodbye. Now that's right. You Next know? in line, baby cakes. Last uh, question, Big Keish, before we wrap it up. What is your uh, fondest memory of the Steiner Brothers uh, backstage? Uh, whether uh, oh my goodness, you know what? My fondest memory is these guys here. As bad as tough as they were on TV on screen, they were just the funniest cats in the back. You know what I mean? The the type of cats that just laugh and rip people, but they would rip people knowing that they the people are not going to rip them back. <laughs> Because they were scared to get their ass whooped. True or false? Yeah. <laughs> is the rib true about them tying up the dude and and maybe... Well, I ain't never heard of that. I don't okay. know where you get your information from. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that must be from the dark sheets. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. I, I, nah, yeah. okay. they, them, them boys from Michigan, man. Yeah. They're college graduates, man. They too smart for all that. They, yes, sir. They just kill you with just looking at you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, shake them. God forbid they go to shake your hand. Uh-huh. Rick was notorious... For you go to shake his hand, he would you would shake his hand and he would squeeze your hand and you would almost feel like all your bones <laughs> in your hand knuckles are just cracking, like he's just deteriorating, breaking your bones as he sh- and he would just sit there and laugh for what? What? <laughs> what? You know, and Scotty, there's just Scotty not too far from his brother. He's just watching his brother just laughing his ass off, you know. Probably doing doing push ups and stuff like that. But yeah. You know, those those guys were good, very uh, good athletes, you know, uh, very smart athletes, you know, coming from Michigan, you know, very prideful of their state, mm-hmm. and their college and stuff. And, man, uh, close brothers, too, man. 
They would, boy, you, you, he, they remind me of my family, you know? Like, we can be left or right, but when we hear some or see some, you know, it's just right back to each other, you know? And they were like that, so good dudes. They, they'll be my friends uh, forever. Well, it's interesting to see where this is going to go um, yeah. with uh, the, the the Suns. And um, like everybody else, I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. Man, um, what if Rick Steiner was to come out when Braun's out there? What does that happen? What, what does that leave Jay? What, man. Oh, wait, wait, let me stop. I might <laughs> drop bombs on him. Drop mean, bombs on him. Just throwing a little something out I mean, wow. I mean, well, wow. That was... <laughs> <laughs> it's wow, wow, wow. That You're talking be, about ratings? Is, that would be cool. The ratings would just go off to see the <laughs> ceiling. Just one time appearance. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, but that's just us. You know, oh, well. if you guys ever want that to happen, all you got to do is call yeah. Rikishi. That's it. That's that. I dare somebody to put up a sign on Monday Night Raw or even SmackDown. You dare somebody? Hashtag call Rikishi. And if they do that, we might have to send them a. Some type of merchandise, maybe off the top. Uh, Letterman tea jacket or, or letter, T-shirt, uh, hat, or yeah, I don't know about a Letterman jacket. <laughs> you know how expensive them damn Letterman jacket is, Joey. Shit, I saw your face when I said luck. the Letterman jacket. He, like, he calculated that in his head. He said, "Oh no, 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 no." You know how expensive them Letterman jacket is? That's for some. That's for big stuff. That's only if I see my name up on the Titron, the, the screen. Uh, you might get a, a Letterman jacket if I see my name up there. Hashtag call Rikishi. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, then they might get it, but for now, I, I, eight I, by ten. I, yeah, man, yeah, man, man, we'll we'll upgrade to maybe a hoodie, uh, you know, maybe a t-shirt and a, and a hat. You know, what I mean? there is a lot of new swag available yeah. right Just now. Go to rikishi 52com Check it out. Big Keys, yeah. is there any final words you got for your listeners tonight? No, I just want to say uh, thank you for everybody for tuning in, and remember, it's always free to be kind. And remember, always remember, smarten up, and we out. Yeet. Yeet.